This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Rev. Tunde Balanta, as he brings you God's Word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. Go with me to Luke chapter 5 this morning. We shall be talking about supernatural provision. Amen. We've been doing this series in uh, Luke 5 from verse 1. And it came to pass, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word, word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their nets break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, and they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. May the Lord bless the reading, reading of his word. You see, Peter had been fishing at the right time. It's the right time to fish all night, but he caught nothing. And Jesus came there. When Jesus came, he needed a pulpit. There were many people around Jesus. Jesus needed a pulpit. And because he needed a pulpit, he, he borrowed one of the, of the ships, one of the boats there. He used it to preach. And when he finished, he said, well, Peter, let down your nets for a drought. Hallelujah. And then Peter did this. And what happened? There was a great catch. And the nets began to break. Um... <laughs> and he had to call his partners to help him. I pray for you that your harvest will be so big that it will not be, I mean, you can't take it in alone. You are going to have to call people to help you. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, let down the nets. And Peter let down the net. And the fishes began to troop in. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Your obedience is an act of sacrifice and a key to supernatural supply. Your obedience is what? An act of sacrifice and a key to supernatural supply. What if Peter had not allowed Jesus to use the boat? What if Peter said, listen, bad day at the office, let me go to my second job. You know, most people have two jobs. Maybe he had another thing he was doing. Yeah. Let me go back to my second job. At least that way, I will make sure that, um, you know, this one did not do today, that one will do. But Peter had obeyed the Lord. He allowed Jesus to use his boat. I want to say to you this morning, every sacrifice you've ever made, God has written it down for you. Psalm 126, 5 and 6. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Psalm 20, verses 1 to 3. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy bond sacrifice seller. 
Hallelujah. You know, friends, in Genesis 22, from verse 4 downwards, I, uh, Abraham obeyed God. He sold in a difficult time. Peter could have gone home that day and said, it wasn't good today. But I want to say to you, child of God, every time you put something in the ground that is not convenient, you make a sacrifice for the king of kings, you put something in God's hand, you put your talent in God's hands, you put your resources in God's hands, you put your finances in God's hand, you put a seed in the ground. Imagine a man who has worked all night, nothing happened, for him to still wait and allow Jesus to use that boat. Listen to me, friends. Nothing from heaven comes cheap. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time, they will not fail. Child of God, a wise farmer knows that if I don't put seed in the ground, I cannot have a harvest. My challenge to you this morning, what is in your hand? You see, God, God can do everything, but God wants to do it with you. It is a law. I said it is a law. God wants to do it with you. The story of your life can be turned around this morning. Peter gave Jesus the, the, the right to use his boat. Jesus did not force him. He wanted to use it. Peter could have said, Jesus, you cannot use this boat today. But he allowed Jesus to use his boat. And I want to say to you, anytime you put something in God's hand, because he's bigger than you, he's mightier than you, he has more resources than you, he has a thousand and one ways to meet your need. He said, the eyes of the Lord is running to and fro to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose hearts are upright towards him. Everything you are doing for heaven, heaven is looking at it, heaven is recording it, and I want to announce to a child of God this morning that the day of compensation is not behind you, it's in front of you in the name of Jesus. There may be a drought in the land. The Bible says, in the time of famine, you shall laugh. I want to say to you, you are going to laugh in the time of famine. Because the Lord who sees in secret is going to reward you in the open. I said, the Lord that sees in secret is going to reward you in the open. The Lord that sees your sacrifice is going to reward you in the open. The Lord that sees your sacrifice is going to reward you in the open. The Lord that sees your sacrifice is going to reward you in the open. The Lord that sees you when nobody is seeing you is going to have a demonstration. Everything you have done for him is speaking for you in this hour. I said everything you have done for him is speaking for you in this hour. Others may not harvest, but you are going to harvest as a child of God. The story of your life is going to be different. They may lack. The Bible says they lie on the lack. He said, but those that trust in him will not lack any good thing. I want to say over your children, you will not lack any good thing. In that office, you will not lack any good thing. The God of heaven will visit you. He's the God of the harvest. He's the Jehovah Sabaoth. He's the God of the harvest. He's going to see to it that in the time of famine, there's rejoicing in my house. In the time of famine, there's rejoicing in your house. He's just somebody who believes that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the covenant keeping God can feed you in the midst of famine, can give you plenty when there's nothing. He can turn the story of your life around. He will make you a shining star the Philistines are going to envy you God will lift you up in this day and hour he will bring you to a wealthy place he will surprise you with miracles he will do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think if you believe it give him a shout of amen, amen. hallelujah I thank this God they say one good turn deserves another some people, they say, I will remember you when I get my promotion. They forget you. I will remember you when the job comes out. They don't remember you. But Jesus cannot use your boats and leave you the way he met you. One time the Lord said to me, he said, you cannot give me your youth and regret your old age. You cannot give God your time. This thing is not rocket science. Two students are in a class. One, one person is going to lecture all the time. He's doing assignments. He's always there. The other one is playing football. He's never around. Parties all the time. Nobody sees him. If he comes out with a distinction, somebody has to ask how they got it. 
You can't be investing your time in the kingdom of God, investing your ability, giving, sowing seed, tithing, and then God will say, I don't care about you. Except you are doing it to man. But if you are doing it for him, the Bible says the God that sees in secret is going to reward you in the open. Your time, your talent, your resources must be invested in the kingdom of God. Everything we do for God is written down. That's why the Bible says a book of remembrance will be open. Let me tell you, when it came to the time of Mordecai, everything he had done, the book of remembrance was open, and they saw what has happened, what he had done before. The, the history of your giving, the history of your sacrifice, heaven is writing it down. He said, may the Lord remember you in the day of trouble. May he remember your offering and your sacrifices and your burnt offering. Those are the things you did for him that were not convenient. And I want to say to you, everybody who, who, who sows in tears, the day of rejoicing is here for you. It is in the time of farming that God remembers and said those ones have been serving me they will not go down like other people I want to tell you that the God that you serve the covenant keeping God that you serve he will see to it that you don't go down like other people your business will not go down like other people your children will not go down like other people I want to announce to you right there and then right there and then when Jesus finished using the boat Jesus said Peter launch out I want to declare for a child of God this will be a month of launching out for me. It will be a month of launching out for restoration. We will see the kind of money we have never seen before. We will see the kind of doors we have never seen before. If you are faithful in a little, it will make you ruler over much. You believe it, wave your hand and give him a shout of hallelujah in the house of the Lord today. Glory to God. I just love this Jesus. He that sees in secret will reward you in the open. He keeps looking at what you are doing in secret. All the time you are praying. All the time you are fasting. All the time you are giving. Ha! He said, which child is this one? Which child is this one? Abraham had to sacrifice. It wasn't convenient. It, if you read the passage, three days, after three days, God said, okay, that's where you are going. It wasn't convenient. But God met Abraham. He had a provision for him in the stead of his son. Hallelujah. Yeah. Launching into the, the deep for your harvest must be an act of faith. Launching into the deep for your harvest must be an act of faith. For Peter, in verses 5 and 6, he said, Master, all nights I've been walking. You know, sometimes you walk at the season you thought you should walk. Some of you here, you are not lazy. You walk hard, yet nothing to show. He said, I have toiled. Toiled means... I, I walk, I tried, I sowed, I fed my birds, I, I went to my office, I, I went to my farm. I, every job I was given, I did it consensuously. I, I did what, you know, what I ought to do. I didn't leave any stone unturned. So, but I caught nothing. But nevertheless, at thy word. One thing I've noticed about God is that you see, you as a believer, you are swimming upstream. That means the current is coming like this, and you are going the other way. I know it's easier to flow with the current than to go against the current. God said, in time of farming, you will laugh. He said, give and it shall be given. Sometimes you look at what is in your hand and say, God, this is tough. But if you obey God as an act of your faith, every giving you do must be in faith. Don't you? I mean, you are not giving, your reason for giving it's not, it's not like you're, you are trying to hold God by the neck, but it is a law. First of all, you give because you love him and you love people. But once you put that in place and your heart is right on that, you must expect something back. Can you say amen, somebody? It's like a farmer who plants on a good ground. He has put manure, he's put everything. I say, well, I just put seed there. Oh. People say, what's wrong with you? You just wasted a bag of corn. You give because you love the Lord, but you say, God, you are the one that put the law of seed time and harvest time. I've put this in the ground, I've put that in the ground, and I'm thanking you in faith. You know why you have to do it in faith? Because every assignment God gives you is bigger than you. Hallelujah. You don't need faith if you can solve the problem. Do you need faith? If, if the need is uh, 10,000 naira, and you have 10,000 naira in your account, is there any need for faith? Because, yeah. But if the need is 10,000 naira, 
and the need is 50 and you have 10. Then you have to be saying, Father, I thank you that you are the one that gives seed to the sower and bread for the eater. I need, I need you to intervene in my situation. And you know what? Your seed, what God puts in your heart may not be so big. It could be a small thing. But the important thing is to plant that seed in the ground. Hello, somebody. I said the important thing is to do what? Plant that seed in the ground. Faithfully do it in the ground. Because God is saying, and because he loves you, he wants to bless. Oh, God, help somebody to see this. If you have children, how many of you have little children? If, a child, if your child is eating biscuits that you bought with your money in the house, huh? biscuits, and the child takes one, I say, Mommy, I want to bless you. What happens to you? What's that child? You are smiling. Some of you, some of you say you're already smiling. It's you that gave the child the biscuit. Oh. When the child is not eating that biscuit, say, Mommy, has it ever happened to anybody here? The child turns and says, Mommy, take. Or even put it in your mouth. What is going through your mind? What can I do for this child? They say, Let's graduate from biscuit to chocolate. Because the child has demonstrated love towards you. Everything you do for God, that's how it feels. When you give to somebody because you love God and you love somebody, God says, ah, ah, this person is touching my heart. So God himself is even looking for how he can bless you. Amen? God is saying to you, what can I do for this child today? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. The Bible says what? They are new every morning. Which means I can wake up every day and say, God, I thank you for your mercy for today. Sometimes the mercy of yesterday will not work for today. I didn't say it is expired because mercy never expires. But the need you have today may be different from what you had yesterday. How many of you understand what I mean? Sometimes the mercy you need may just be, ah, if somebody will just come and help me with this problem. You have been ransacking your head. And God will just send somebody. And the person will help you with the problem. I want you to see this morning that God, God is looking for how to bless you in this new month that we're going into. In this new month that we're going into, starting tomorrow, God is looking for how we honor every seed you have ever put in the ground concerning him. One translation said, every act of love you've done towards him is looking for how to bless you back. God is not a stingy God, everything. And you need to, in faith, say, Father, I thank you because I have given, it is given to me because you love me. Even as that child gave that biscuit and the mother is thinking, what else can I do for this child? God is thinking big about it. That's why he said, I can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you cannot. I pray that God will give you such a blessing like Peter. You will fall down on your face and say, God, this is too much. It, it is too good to be true. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right. So it must be an act of faith. Peter said to the Lord, uh-uh. I fished at the right time. I didn't catch anything. And now you are saying that I should launch into the deep. The Sea of Galilee was 200 feet <laughs> below sea level, subject to storms. People with small, small boats, they don't go there. In the deep, you don't go into the deep. You stay at the edge. It's like you don't know how to swim. You know, people that don't know how to swim, you see adults holding the edge of the swimming pool, moving by the edge. If they go, if they go inside, they may go and drown. That's the problem with the Sea of Galilee. It was <laughs> 200 feet below sea level, subject to storms. So when Jesus said, launch the deep, he said, ah, number one, it's the wrong time to fish. Some of you will tell you, that this contract you are trying to do, nobody is doing the type now. Has anybody had that kind of thing? The kind of money you are looking for, the condition of the economy is not going to work now. But what I want to tell you, he said, I will meet all your needs according to the economy of your nation. According to what? His riches in glory. His riches in glory. You are the son of God. You are a child of the king. He loves you as much as he loves Jesus. Everything he puts in this world is for your good, is for your benefit. And I want to say to you, if you will do it as an act of faith, if you will do it as an act of faith, the God of heaven will move everything in your behalf to bring you favor this time in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
So Peter obeyed. He's never done that before. Launching into the deep is when your leg cannot touch ground. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there are people swimming. Eh? But they are moving. Their leg is touching ground when they are swimming. Do you know that kind of swimming? Your leg is on the ground. You are just doing like this. You are deceiving people. But you cannot stay flat in the water. When you are in the deep, it means that God has to carry you himself. Oh, God. I said, when you are in the deep, it means God has to carry you. Because on your own, you don't even know how you will swim through that water. I don't know who I came to talk to this morning. I remember when the Lord told us to build that orphanage many years ago. 20 odd years ago now. Maybe 22 years ago, I don't know. Something like that. That time there was big crisis all over the place. People were telling me that time that, ah, pastor, this is not the time to do this kind of project. Hallelujah. That was a Sharia crisis, if I remember that time correctly. God said it would be a signpost that that season will come to an end. And it came to an end. When we came here, the Lord said, it's another signpost of peace and the gospel will reign. And I believe that. Hallelujah to Jesus. Launching into the deep means that you are going to get the kind of harvest you've never seen before. You see, they caught so many fishes, but it took faith to do it. Launching into the deep means that you will go to places you've never entered before. Hmm. You will enter offices you've never entered before. You will go and speak to people you have never spoken to before. Because the probability very high that Peter had never launched into the deep with that small boat because of the danger. When Israel was leaving Egypt, God told them to launch into the deep. Go and ask your bosses for the kind of money you have never asked them before. So obviously they will say no. But if the owner of the money has already gone ahead of you, can they say no? God is the owner of the money. He said, go and ask them. Go and borrow things from them. So they went to their madams and their bosses and said, hey, I need your Ferrari. I need your gold. And they gave it to them. I want to say to you, because of the seed that has gone ahead of you, as you obey the Lord as an act of your faith, and take steps of faith this day and in the new month that we are going into. I want to say to a child of God, the kind of favor you have never seen is going to come upon you and the God of heaven will see to it that there's a harvest for your labor in the name of Jesus. They got things that they could never have dreamt about. I am believing for you. I'm believing for everybody under the sound of my voice that the favor you have never had before because of the seed that has gone ahead of you, the God of heaven will give you a visitation of favor in the name of Jesus. Doors will open for, oh my God, where they have never opened before in the name of Jesus. If you can take it by faith, say, I receive in the name of Jesus. Please sit down for a bit. Launching into the deep releases compensation. Let's look at it. Launching into the deep does what? Releases compensation. You see, if you don't take that step, look at Lamentations chapter 3 verse 37. Um, let's read one or two. Lamentations 3, 37. Who is he that said, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commanded it not? So once the Lord has commanded it, the fishes in that lake, all of them had the voice of Jesus when he said, let down your net for a drought. Once he has spoken, once you have a scripture to stand upon, I want you to know that the dead will hear his voice and they shall live. Hallelujah to Jesus. It's a season of compensation. It's Exodus 3.21. And I'll give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. 
Acts chapter 10, from verse 1. There was a certain man called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Verse 3, he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius, and he, and he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers, thine arms, are come before God as a memorial. Later on, we know fasting was part of it. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel who spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his how those serpents and, 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 and devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Time out will not allow me to read the whole story, but let me tell you how it is. I said it's compensation. Hallelujah. This man had just been giving, he's been fasting, he's been praying. He was not a believer. He was not a, a, a Jewish believer. He was a, he was a Gentile like me and you. Amen? He didn't know the God of Israel. Oh, God. I said he didn't know the God of Israel. But God was writing down for this man what he was doing. There's nothing you've done, nothing you've done that heaven has not recorded for you. God was writing it down. And then God now spoke to him in a vision. He said, go and look, send somebody to Joppa. Go and find Peter, Simon Peter, an apostle. He's staying with Simon the Tanner. Uh, look at supernatural. Super, how God can orchestrate your, your steps in this new month we're about to enter. God meets him and God meets Peter. Maybe that company is giving you a headache. Maybe that or guy is giving you a headache. As you are meeting with God, my prayer is that God will meet with them. Oh, your amen is not okay. There's a big difference when God meets your opposition. No? Uh, God met Peter. Read the story. Peter was, he was, you know, fell into a trance. He was waiting for lunch or something. He fell into a trance. And those unclean animals came down. And he said, God, I cannot eat any unclean thing. And God told him, some men seek you. Go downstairs. And when Peter went downstairs... God will be your connection. I said, God will be your connection. I said, God will be your connection. P Peter, uh, Cornelius did not write any SMS. He did, not, he did not make any phone call. But his seed made phone call for him. The things he had done, God himself made the connection. The person that would give him problem, God appeared to the person and said, Hey, Mr. Peter, I'm sending you to solve this problem. My prayer for you in this new month you are entering is that the God of heaven, it will meet every opposition. The God of heaven will speak to the mountain for you. The God of heaven will speak to the miracle to come for you. I want to believe with you that because of your seed and your sacrifice and the things you've done, God will reciprocate by sending a Peter your way, by sending an apostle your way, by sending somebody your way, somebody bigger, somebody higher. He will take you to another level of his mercy. He will take you to another level of his grace because when God goes ahead of you, I want to tell you, every mountain will be level. Every provision will be made supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your people this morning. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice this morning that you will do for them what you did for Cornelius. You will find their Peter. Wherever their Peter is, you will find their Peter. Provision will come to them. You will solve the problem before they have a need to even speak the problem. Before they have a need to say the need. Before they have a need to meet the Peter. You will meet the Peter of their miracles. 
people. You will meet the Peter of their intervention. I pray for you this morning that God will raise your Peter. He will speak to your Peter. He will tell them to come and find you. You will not apply for the job. The job will apply for you. They will headhunt you for your miracle. The God of heaven, he will do a new thing for me. He will do a new thing for this house. He will Oh, stand to your feet and lift your hand and begin to receive it. Begin to receive it. Begin to receive it. Begin to receive it. Cornelius did not apply to Peter. God told Peter to go to Cornelius' house. You will not be running around with application. The God of heaven will cause them to find you. If you believe that, lift your hand. and You know where your need is. Pray that prayer simply. God, send my Peter my way. Send me divine appointments. Send my Peter my way. Physically, it was impossible. It was impossible for a Peter, a Jew, to go and look for a Gentile. It, was, it will never happen and be worshipping together. But God made the connection. And even told Peter, when they arrived his place, say, go down, men seek you. Peter said, the spirit bade me go. When Peter was challenged, why did you go and eat? He said, the spirit bade me go. I believe that God will raise your Peter and your Peter will locate you today and in these new months. You know, all, everything about life is about hinges and keys. Big doors, they swing on small hinges. When God makes that connection that you need, it will become easy for you. Lift your hand as I pray for you. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. We need hinges and, and keys. Thank God that Peter was the key for Cornelius. You made the connection. Father, every connection that is needed, we are asking for divine intervention. For every connection for miracle, every connection for breakthrough, every connection for another level, you took Cornelius into another dispensation something he could never have done Father by your divine connection in our businesses, in our offices in the things we have to do this day and in the new month ahead of us Father we are asking that you will be the connector, you will be the one to arrange it because when you arrange it nobody can question you, when you arrange it nobody can say it's not available Lord do something that will fall down like Peter and say this is beyond us Father take all the glory for every need in our life at this time Take all the glory. Send the Peter our way. Send the Peter of our miracle our way. In the name of Jesus, where our children are concerned, our husbands are concerned, our wives are concerned, our offices are concerned, our future is concerned, our destiny, oh God. Send the Peter of our miracle. Take all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Give him praise and glory in the house of God. Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org. You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m., and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.